you know, I have a passion for public service. I'm very dismayed at the gridlock at the oh. Capitol. House candidate Yvonne no Seltzer and Nancy Nelson <laughs> coming right up. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region through DFL Senate District 48. Now here's host Tim O'Brien. Democrats around Minnesota are in the midst of their conventions. We'll review the first round of them in the southwest suburbs. With us through the show is our favorite guest, AM 950 Radio, Nancy Nelson. That's quite an introduction. Thank you. Let's uh, let's begin a report on the uh, legislative endorsements that took place uh, yes. around the uh, around the area. I live in Senate District 49. You live in Senate District 48. What went on at your convention? Well, pretty much what goes on at all of them. It, it, it's a wonderful opportunity for the candidates who are looking for an endorsement to come and talk to you. And what's interesting, at least from my perspective in our district, I'm thinking, okay, one of them is going to be, because I knew both of them had interviewed both of them on the air, and man, they both came out of the shoot 100%. That's nice. That's yeah, a lot it of was fun. it was quite wonderful. And then we elected delegates to the state convention, and uh, our effort to do that required the the walking sub caucus sub caucus and i'll tell you what now, the only other time i the first time i went to this level was in 2000 i was like a deer in headlights because everybody there saying okay we're going to have a walking sub caucus and we're going and you need to get up there and you need to say what your platform is and i'm thinking what? And this time there were a lot of people there, thank goodness, who said, this is my first time. And I said, just ask somebody who knows, they'll help. Nancy, I know that, uh, that uh, your Senate district uh, uh, nominated uh, Yvonne Seltzer. Yes. And she hopes to uh, win back the house seat that Maria Rood held for three terms. Do you think that uh, she can put that seat back in the DFL column? I have to believe she can because we need it in the DFL column. We never should have lost Maria. As you know, for some reason, the Republican National Committee decided that Maria's seat here in Minnesota was very, very important. And they started, they sent in a bunch of money. Usually there's not a lot of money involved in these local races. They sent in a ton of money and then they really did some icky campaigning. They lied about her in a horrible way. And aren't you concerned, Tim? I am that it's going to be like that more and more and more. This whole thing with the packs and nobody is traceable and money can dump in from everywhere. I think this is only the beginning. Democrats in suburban Minneapolis know what they are up against. They're gearing up. Enthusiasm has been marking their local conventions. The goal is to win back the Minnesota House and Senate in November and to again send a moderate progressive to Washington to represent voters in the 3rd Congressional District. We need to ask them to pay... Sharon Sun campaigned with passion and vision, but Brian Barnes won the DFL endorsement for the race to replace Eric Paulson in Congress. Now my background's humble. My mom's a school teacher, my dad's a technician. In New State First Senate District all, 50, like parts of Richfield and Bloomington, Senator Ken Kellish, formerly of Minneapolis, lost his bid for an endorsement to former school board chair Melissa Wickland. House incumbents Linda Slocum and Ann Lencheski also got a thumbs up. In Senate District 49, DFLers endorsed newcomer Melissa Franzen and former House members Ron Earhart and Paul Rosenthal. Senator Ron Latz and House members Ryan Winkler and Steve Simon were endorsed by Senate District 46. Senator Terry Bonoff, House member John Benson, and Audrey Britton are good by District 44 Democrats. Paul Thiessen got the nod from District 61. Our candidate, Lori McHenry, she was just endorsed today to run for the Senate seat for District 48. Um, I will tell you, we will have that message and it'll be strong. Right Lori McKendry is the DFL 48 choice for a state Senate run to represent Eden Prairie and Southern Minnetonka. McKendry joins DFLer Yvonne Seltzer, who is running for House District 48A. So it's time to stop the politics of division and distraction and focus on the real issues of education, our economy, jobs, and the quality of life. This is fun. Welcome, Yvonne Seltzer. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. I'm delighted to be here. Yvonne, 
I would like to congratulate you and tell you that you are perhaps a combination of the bravest woman and the goofiest woman I've ever known. Who on <laughs> earth willingly takes on this challenge? Well, Nancy, I have to tell you that this was not my original plan. I served for two terms on the Hopkins School Board. Yes. And when I, um, during my last year on the board, we had a survey done and it recorded the highest public trust in the Hopkins School Board in over a decade. We had won numerous awards, um, academic awards, while I was on the board and culminating when I was chair with five uh, fiscal excellence awards, four from the state and one national award. And That's so, so remarkable. Oh. And, and it was because you saw that and of course the awful thing that happened to Maria rude that you decided because Maria was not going to go after it again to run for her seat and get us get that seat back on the DFL side of the ledger the obvious question is you're really facing a tough battle yes. and you're going to be out there telling every one of us why you can do it I um I can do it because I've done it I have a proven track record. When I first came on the board, when I was the newest board member, Nancy, we experienced some real fiscal difficulties. And so I rolled up my sleeves. I spearheaded and chaired the first board audit committee in the Minnesota school district. And we, um, as I mentioned, um, we culminated all of it. We had a very healthy fund balance and we were winning awards for fiscal excellence in reporting and management. And so you're right, when I, I retired, I enjoyed that for about two days. And then, um, <laughs> and when, uh, after redistricting was complete and people started to call me and ask me if I would run, the first thing I did was call Maria and yes. ask her if she would run. And she said, no, but would you? And so, you know, I have a passion for public service. I'm very dismayed at the gridlock at the oh. Capitol. There is no, no cooperation, no common sense, and we just, need to, we just need to restore that, and that's what I'd like to bring. I would like to think that an awful lot of people who voted to place a Republican in the legislature in 2010 have had buyer's remorse. And I would think that as you're running against your opponent, one of the obvious things you can pull out, am I wrong, is here's what he did and here's what he didn't do and, and force them to look at his voting record. The big thing for me was the shutdown in the last government session. and. The people, the innocent people that were thrown out of work, yeah. and there's just no excuse for that. On the yeah. school board, we had deadlines given to us by the state to get our work done in a timely manner, and we did it. And there's no reason why, and that, that we can't do that at the state capitol. And I've done it, and I am going to go and, of course, um, make my case. I do have uh, bipartisan support because as a school board um, member, I receive votes from Democrats, Republicans, independents, all parties because it's a nonpartisan office. And so I'm going to go talk to those people and visit with those people and we can chat about what they'd like to see at the state capitol. Um, how do you see the state's role in uh, controlling the costs associated? You cannot know what all the specific industries. I am really worried about the legacy amendment the funding is meant for the arts in Minnesota and for our last. We were you were commenting on jobs, and so I'm wondering what your stance is on creating more jobs in in the area. You use the word gridlock, and there's no question that since 2010, we have seen I think an unprecedented situation, and it seems mean spirited. It seems stupid. It seems harmful, literally harmful to our state and our citizens. Do you think? Do you really, really, really in your heart think? that they can fix it, that you can be a part of the fix of all of this? I think I can be a part of it, and I think people are really tired of it. People do not want gridlock. They did not send, they did not send legislators of either party or any of the parties to the legislature to, to argue and, and fight. They sent them to work, work out the issues, and it's time to stop the politics of division and distraction, Nancy, and it's time to focus on the issues that really matter to Minnesota. Like jobs, jobs, jobs. Like jobs, jobs, jobs. Yes. Which was promised when they won in 2010 and we have yet at the, almost the end of the second legislative session to see a single job creation from these folks and now the hard work really starts you are going to be pounding the pavement and you need our help how can we help get you there because we need you i do need your help i yep. need all of your help and what you can do is volunteer i urge people to visit um, our website www.evonselser.com 
www.thepeopleshow.com. And you can volunteer, and you, you, which will be great. And you can also contribute. That's always helpful because we have to, um, we have to get our message out. Yeah. And we have to um, make sure that we're ready to counteract any misinformation or negative messages such as came out in the last election. Are you not concerned, knowing what the Republicans were willing to do to Maria Rudd, that they might attempt to do the same thing to you? Yes, and, and they very well may try to do the same thing to me. And so what I need to do is get my message out to the people. Uh, the nice thing is that for eight years, a large portion of my Senate District 48A, have, they've seen me in action locally on the school board. And I, I look forward to connecting with those people that I have not yet had the pleasure to meet. And so I think by personal contact, by the droves of volunteers that I know that this appeal And will. the donations. Yes. You need to have cash. Yes. We're there, aren't we? We're there. Yvonne Seltzer, S-E-L-C-E-R dot com. Bless your heart. You are brave and wonderful, and we need you. Good luck. Thank you, Nancy. Good luck. Thank Thanks, you. Yvonne. Thank you. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region through DFL Senate District 48, Lori Pryor, Chair.